G'day. In this episode of the Oracle Mobile Application Framework Online Training, we'll investigate adding gesture support, that is finger swipes to your math application, as well as further look at the operation tags, action listener and set property listener. You, like me, have probably had an experience where you've watched a toddler pick up something like an iPad, and with virtually no computer experience, they happily start swiping away and using the application at hand. It's amazing how intuitive smartphones and tablets are, arguably because of the support for finger gestures. I remember when my youngest daughter was two, having watched her sister use the iPad, her look of confusion when she walked up to the TV and couldn't get it to react to her finger gestures. A remote control just wasn't intuitive to her. Touching and using our fingers since the day we're born is much more intuitive. So obviously finger gestures are an important part of mobile applications. Let's have a look for how we should use them in math applications. In terms of math gestures, these can be used to do one of three things. Invoke actions on defined components, display pop-ups, or invoke page navigation. As you can imagine, you might have a list of items on the screen, and with a left or right swipe, you might want to delete the swiped list item. To do this, the swipe action should invoke programmatic code behind the scenes to complete the user's wishes. Alternatively, another gesture, a tap and hold, where you hold your finger down for a second and then invoke an action, would be good for revealing more information on part of the screen through a pop-up. Finally, swiping between screens in your application, effectively navigating between pages, all of these three are good examples of why you would want to use gestures in your application. Gestures in math are supported at both the component and page level. At the component level, gestures typically support actions rather than navigation. Gestures are introduced into components by adding an operation tag, such as an action listener, set property listener, or the show and close pop-up behavior tags to command buttons and links and list items. These operation tags all support a property type which defines what gesture the component supports and then what to do upon the gesture. In terms of supported gestures, this includes swipe right, swipe left, swipe up, and down, and tap and hold, which requires the user to hold their finger for one second on the same spot. It's also worth mentioning in iOS, this is only iOS, doesn't include Android, there is support for swipe start and swipe end. These are used for bi-directional language support. For all intents and purposes, these are the equivalents to swipe left and right, but they swap if you're displaying a language like Hebrew. So here we have an existing page, gestures.amx. As you can see, the page is wired up with a list view AMX component which, if we look at the value property, we can see it retrieves data from an employee's data collection. In turn, looking at the list item component and its output text child component, we can see it is outputting the last name from the employee's collection. So it's a reasonable guess the list view displays all the employees in a list on the screen. What we want to do is provide the ability for the user to swipe left on a selected employee in a list item to delete that employee. More specifically, we want to implement the swipe left gesture on the list item to cause a pop-up to display prompting the user do they really want to delete the employee. Now to shortcut this demo, we've already defined a pop-up at the bottom of the page that shows the message and two buttons to confirm or cancel the operation. We won't worry about wiring them up to do any actual work as we want to focus on adding the gesture support for this demo. Now let's see how we add the swipe gesture to the list item. From the component palette, we drag a show pop-up behavior onto our list item component. Like we've seen previously in the training, you then need to define the pop-up ID this show pop-up behavior will invoke, in this case P1, as well as which component to align the pop-up against. I'll select LI1 for the demo. Then for the show pop-up behavior tag, we specify the swipe gesture we want to use by setting the type property. From the property inspector, we can see all the values possible of which we'll select swipe left. And that's it, that's all we need to do to add gesture support to our page. 
Putting aside adding gestures to individual components, you can also add gesture support at the page level, which provides page navigation to the previous next pages in a task flow. This behavior is added at the AMX view level using a navigation drag behavior tag. The navigation drag behavior tag, if added in the AMX view tag, allows the user on swiping left or right to navigate to another page defined in the parent task flow. It's worth noting that in using this component, it's important to set the associated task flow control flow case transition animation to something visually to represent the swipe left or right. Otherwise, the overall visual effect looks dull or incorrect. Users expect to see that sliding screen. Here we have a pre-existing feature called navigation containing a similarly named task flow. The task flow is made up of three separate pages, a starting page, and page one and page two, which we want to swipe left and right to from the start page. The pages themselves can contain any content but for purposes of the demonstration here, they simply contain some text to tell the user what page they're currently on. Returning to the starting page to add support for swipe gestures to navigate pages in the task flow, we drag from the component palette the navigation drag behavior tag into the AMX view component. To re-emphasize this point, the navigation drag behavior tag is a child of the view tag, not the panel page tag. On dropping the component onto the page, we need to define firstly, which task flow navigation rule do we want the tag to convoke? As well, what swipe gesture, that being backwards or forwards. Typically backwards is swiping to the right and forwards is swiping to the left. So for page one, we want to swipe back from left to right from the start page. Then adding another navigation drag behavior tag. When navigating to page two, we want to swipe forward from right to left. Similarly on page one, we add a navigation drag behavior tag to swipe forward from right to left to return to the start page. And then finally on page two, we add a navigation drag behavior tag to swipe back from left to right to return to the start page. Now that we've configured the navigation drag behavior tags, let's work on the animations. Returning to the task flow, for each navigation rule, we need to set their transition animation. For go page one, that's slide right. For go start, that slide left. Then on the other side for go page two is slide left. Then slide right for the remaining option. Having configured all of this, now on running the application, You can see the swipe gesture support as we move from the start page to the first page, back to the start page, then finally to the second page and back again. Note that the animations when swiping pages are consistent. The pages move left to right or right to left based on the task flow control flow case transition animation that we've set. Before finishing off in this episode, we need to conclude with a chat about the action listener and set properly listener tags. As we just discussed, tags like the action listener and set property listener allow us to add gesture support to our pages. In this code example, the list view tag has a list item tag with an action listener that on swipe right calls a bean method delete. From the EL, we can guess the bean method will delete the selected product. But there's a problem with this example. How will the delete method know which row to delete? We're not passing in the selected product ID here. Now, I guess we could solve this in code somehow, but hmm, this sounds like something so common, do we really need to create a code solution here? Can math make this easier? This is where the set property listener comes in to save us some coding. The set property listener allows us to copy values between a source and destination without writing Java code based on a user action. So in this example, when the user swipes right on the list item, 
the set property listener fires and by EL it copies the product ID from the current row and writes it to a setter method of the same name in our handler class. Great, so then we can change our delete method to grab the product ID instance variable from the same handler class and complete the delete action. As you can likely guess, the order of the set property listener and action listener tags is important, as if you had them the other way around, the action listener would fire before the bean product ID instant variable will have been set. Overall from this trivia example, you can see that the set property listener tag is very useful in saving you lots of little pieces of Java code and simply copying values around. So to conclude this episode, we've looked at adding gesture support both to components and page level, and we've also looked at the action listener and set property listener tags, which save you a amount of coding when you're calling your backend beans. Thanks very much for your time today.